My name, Li Peng. I want to be good engineer like Mr. Martinson. <laughs> Very good, Lee. Very good. You're going to be talking like an American before you know it. Mr. Martinson, how you call? Well, that's a wrench. Lynch in Sakan. Kunjai Lun. Kunjai Lun. Lynch. No. Not lynch. Wrench. Now, I know that's a hard sound for you to get. But... Yes, sir. What happened to the truck? It's Mr. Martinson's. Came from up there. Was he in it? Yes. Tinny Peng! I work no more on this road. Drunk man in truck. Drunk man kill. He does. Yeah, 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 yeah. When did who saw this happen? Me. I see. Drink too much whiskey. Then truck killed Johnny Sumpat. You not give one big damn what happened to poor Sakanese people. We all feel bad about this. But that kind of name calling is not going to help anybody. I quit. I work no more for American imperialists. Hold on. Tinny Ping, Song, don't take your own day. Hold on, Nong Song. His neck's broken. He couldn't have felt a whole lot. Tinny Ping, don't take your own. Is he really drunk? I don't remember ever seeing him take a drink, Homer. Boy, oh, there's something weird going on around here. Come on, let's get him back to the base. Bunji, that guy quit. Get him out of here. Hey, Lord, stop the mullet. Pull on, piggy, look at us. How the American say, my tongue cannot go to Han Kennedy. Ben Gan, do it, you are some harm. I told him the autopsy proved that our truck driver wasn't drunk and I asked for a retraction. Did they retract it? They did not. They just changed it around. This may be your last chance to set the record straight. One clear, sane statement about why we're building Freedom Road. Those reporters are willing to listen. They'd like to know. It's not that simple. I've been sitting here trying to put it into words, but what's the use? Those reporters twist everything I say. I know that Freedom Road is good for them, and you know it, and Bing knows it. But how do you tell these Sarkanese people? They don't really want to know anyway. All right. I'll go down and tell them that you're sick. Mr. Ambassador, I understand what you want. I'll ad-lib something. I'll take the seriousness out. Don't worry, Granger. Everybody loves Joe Bing. And thank them for coming. Yes, sir. 
You're not going to see them at all, are you? I've only a couple of days left in this assignment, Granger. We should wait till the new ambassador comes. McWhite has been named as ambassador, and if the Senate confirms him tomorrow, he'll be here in a couple of weeks. I shouldn't start something I'm not going to be here to finish. So, we do nothing. Again. Gentlemen, will report back to the committee on Tuesday at 11 o'clock for a continuation of this hearing. Is the ambassador designate to Sarkhan next? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McWhite in the robe. Mr. McWhite. Right. Now keep your vest pulled down. Mr. McWhite. Mr. McWhite, we're glad to have you say why you think we should act favorably on your nomination as ambassador to Sarkhan. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, senators, I have about 15 pages here, which I wrote last night, uh, an explanation of my qualifications. And as I read them over this morning, they sound so much like my own eulogy that I've decided to let my mother uh, publish them privately after I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you don't mind, I would just prefer to answer the questions. Have you any speaking knowledge of the Sarkhanese language? Uh, yes, a little. Will you say something, please? Ko sandisuk chong mi ka pracha chong tuwalu. What does that mean? Roughly, that means may there be peace among all peoples of the world. Now, you were a vice president of McWhite Publications in charge of the foreign office, isn't that so? That's right, headquartered in Paris. Would that background qualify you for this position? Well, one of the functions of my job, Senator, was to uh, interview world leaders. Uh, you probably know what it's like to be interviewed, Senator, and I think that uh, you can appreciate that a good reporter has to win the confidence and trust of people if he's to write anything perceptive about them. I've never read anything perceptive about me. Well, I've, <laughs> I haven't interviewed you. <laughs> I will now yield to my distinguished friend from the nation's dairy land, Senator Macon. Sir, I thought this was a very poor nomination when it came down, and I still do. Mr. McWhite, let's get into your war record. You were in Sarkhand during the war? Yes, my plane was shot down and I bailed out. Why'd they give you the Silver Star? Well, as you know from the citation... I don't know anything, Mr. McWhite. The record's blank until you fill it in. The award was given for sabotage activities behind enemy lines. Um, Sarkhan was under Japanese occupation at the time, and I fought with the Sarkhanese underground. Nothing personal in my attitude, Mr. McWhite. I just wanted to see if you'd fly off the handle. I know Senator Brenner has to leave shortly, and he's anxious to question this nominee. I yield to him and leave the rest of my interrogation until he's finished. I appreciate the Senator's generosity, and with the Chairman's kind indulgence, I will attempt to curb my oratory and make my questions brief. Now, I think you mentioned reporting and sabotage as things you do very well. Is it your belief that all reporters are qualified to be ambassadors? No more than all ambassadors are qualified to be reporters. Is it your belief that all men skilled in sabotage who happen to be in Sarkhan during the war are qualified to be ambassadors? Well, unless I haven't been properly briefed, Senator, I wasn't aware that uh, sabotage was one of the qualifications you were looking for. Serious answers would be more to your benefit, Mr. McWhite. 
I beg your pardon, Senator. I didn't take your line of questioning as having a serious intent. I beg your pardon. Now, according to your dossier, your chief qualification seems to be your friendship for this man, Chai Kyung. Beg your pardon, sir. Chai Kyung. Uh, uh, the name is De Young, sir. It's pronounced with a pronounced with a D. De Young. Yes. This man was your wartime buddy, an ordinary rice farmer who helped you blow up bridges. Uh, he was a rice farmer, Senator. I think ordinary has very little to do with De Young, however. An extraordinary rice farmer. The record stands corrected. Does this man hold public office? He was offered the uh, prime ministership, which he felt he didn't have enough education or polish to accept. So he stepped aside after he led his people to revolution. The answer is no. Can you say why your friendship with this man, who has no say in his government's policies, should qualify you? Uh, yes, I think I can, Senator. <clears throat> De Jong is as important to Sarkhan as de Gaulle was to France before he resumed the presidency. He may be the single most popular man in his country today, and he has a profound influence on his people. When's the last time you saw him? Uh, seven years ago in Hong Kong. <clears throat> we spent a day together. The time before that was 1948 in uh, Bangkok. I think it was a weekend. I'm not sure. We. We'd been celebrating our reunion with a touch of rice wine, as I recall. Both times were before Sarkhan gained independence. That's right. What'd you talk about? I don't know. Personal things. Don't you remember what you talked about? Well, I, I think we discussed whatever good friends talk about, personal things. I think we discussed uh, life, uh, the ladies, um, as a matter of fact, I think we spend most of our time laughing. But not politics. If I don't recall, we might have touched on the subject. Do you write to each other frequently? Yes, so do our wives. You influence his thinking? Ooh, yes, I, I would say so. Uh, in the same way that good friends always influence each other. Uh, during the war, he was very curious about democracy, and I gave him my views. Does he share them? To a large extent, in, in his own way, Senator, uh, I would say so, yes. That still prevails. Our friendship prevails, Senator, and as I say, uh, we haven't discussed politics for quite some time. So in your own mind, this warm friendship still prevails. You share and respect each other's views. And you feel that this common ground will enable you to present the position of this country to a sympathetic and influential popular leader. Do you agree with my conclusions? I think you've summed it up admirably, Senator. Thank you, Mr. McWhite. I present the following document for the committee's edification. Quote, the United States has again taken up the cudgel of colonialism. I warn America. Our multitudes are pledged as one man, one voice, one heart, to resist the imperialist tide to the end and beyond the end, unquote. Now, that sounds red to me. Not only is that speech out of context, Senator. Do you respect and share those views, Mr. McWhite? No, I do not share them. Yes, I do respect them, and I resent the senator's Do you deny no. that de Young is an out-and-out -out communist who wants to take I deny country... that. I deny that emphatically, Senator. And furthermore, I would like to point out to you that that speech was made at the Afro-Asian Conference in Bandung, April 18, 1955, which was three months after de Jong had led his people to independence and after the United States had postponed recognition of that independence, and after you, sir, on the Senate floor, spoke out clearly against any foreign aid at all to his country. Now I submit that de Jong had cause for passion, but those are not the views he holds today. Here is a picture taken just last spring, Mr. McWhite. Take a look at it. De Young at the May Day Parade in Peiping, shaking hands with Joe and Lai. Senator, I, I can show you countless photographs of uh, the president shaking hands with Khrushchev. Now, on those grounds, are you willing to call the president of the United States a communist as well? I'm willing to call you not well-informed enough to represent this country. 
I called Castro a red in 1958 when people like you were clapping hands over every move he made. And I say it about De Young. What have you to offer except blind faith that De Young is not a communist? What I have to offer, Senator, I think has been clearly documented in this hearing. But if faith in de Jong's belief were the only thing I had to offer, I would be proud and confident to stand on that alone. We must not be the grass beneath the fighting elephants of East and West. We do not want the American military road. We do not want to be in the Cold War. But our Prime Minister Quinn Tsai has pushed us into it. We have no voice. We have no vote. Cop <laughs> chai. But a new American ambassador is coming tomorrow. A dear friend of mine from long ago. When he hears us say we do not want the road, he will listen. I'm not welcome in official circles. I have not been invited to greet him, but you can go to the airport without an invitation. Stand quiet with your banners and your signs. Be peaceful. Welcome him. But let him know what we insist upon. Sakan for the Sakanese. <laughs>
Mr. Ambassador. How do you do? Jumping. Well, it's a little noisy for Sunday, isn't it? There's a riot starting over there, Mr. Ambassador. I think we'd better hurry. All right. Let me help you, Mr. McFly. Everything went wrong. Not quite. Is he safe? Yes. The army came. And our people? Did our people take part? Not at first. But it spread. It spread. It was madness. I'm Ambassador McWhite. I've met the Chiefs of Section, and I'll... I'll get to know the rest of you as we go along. I realize that we weren't uh, expected to start business until tomorrow, so please accept my apologies for interrupting your day of rest. Is there Mr. Jacobson in the room? Over here. I had lunch with your father the other day. He sends you his best. Oh, thank you, sir. He wrote me about it. Well, here's a gentleman looking for a lost tennis ball. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Ambassador, but I didn't have time to change. That's perfectly all right. Glad you got here as quick as you did. You can in a political section. Good, fine. <clears throat> now, I'd like to discuss the riot at the airport. The what? You riot. should have been here. What riot? Boy, talk about your wild men from Borneo. It's a miracle that we get out of there alive. How many of you knew that there was a riot? Can I see a show of hands? How many of you knew there was going to be a mass demonstration? Is your hand up, Jacobson? One, two, three, four, five. Mr. Ambassador. Johnson. We heard rumors there was going to be some kind of a peaceful protest march. That's why the police were at the airport. But they said it was supposed to be limited. Who? Who what, sir? Who said? The Foreign Office. You checked that out? Not any further than that, no, sir. Well, weren't there any signs of preparation, no uh, movement, or they just uh, dig a tunnel to the airport and pop up like gophers? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, nobody wants to wriggle out of a mistake. and Admittedly, there was one. But we uh, chiefs of section were at the airport, and we couldn't very well keep an eye on the city streets. And on Sunday, well, everybody usually just takes the day off. On Sunday, Mr. Jacobson, they bomb Pearl Harbor. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, if I may, most of us here live in the American compound, sir. And that happens to be located way the other side of Heidel. Well, who were the people at the airport? Communists. Communists. No. There must have been 6,000 people out there. What about De Jong? Well, I don't think De Jong's a communist. I never have. I've been watching De Jong longer than anyone here. And when you've got that many people... No. I can't buy that either. He's a neutralist, Johnson. Neutralist, nationalist, call him anything you like. But De Jong's been traced to Munsang seven times in the last month. And Munsang is the leader of the Communist Party. I'd like to interrupt you, gentlemen, to point out that the only thing that is clear so far is that there's no clarity at all. So if you don't mind, we'll stop this squabbling and I'll present you with some facts. Yes, sir. About three hours ago, there were several people trampled to death. A policeman was pistol whipped until his face looked like raspberry jam. And the man who represents the person of the President of the United States was almost killed, along with his wife and other members of his party. Now, I, I don't mind telling you that I was afraid out there this afternoon. But I didn't know what fear was until this meeting got started. You gentlemen have given me something to think about. Now, here's something for you. Confusion, ignorance, and indifference will cease as of this moment. Information about everything that happens in Sarkhan will be kept up to date, and that's seven days a week. That's seven days a week, gentlemen, and Sundays included, and I don't give a damn where you live. And the next time that there are 6,000 people that begin a riot, or six people, without this embassy being aware of it, those responsible will be on the first plane out of here with my personal recommendation that they be dropped from the Foreign Service. Are there any questions? Will there be any questions of any kind from anyone at all? Now, I want to see your files on every anti-American incident that's occurred over the past six months. I want to see all progress reports from all departments and everything issued by the USIS. Now, kindly be back here as soon as you finish. That's all. This note just came. They said it's important. Thank you. Would you please call Mrs. McWhite? Yes, sir. 
Granger, I think we should have some food sent in. We'll probably be here late. Mac, you really told him. You really shook him up. Bing, I don't like food licking, and uh, I don't like your coarse manners. Now, you get yourself together, you get out. Right. Uh, Bing, don't call me Mac. Yes, sir. Mr. Ambassador, as the man in charge of this embassy since Ambassador Sears left, I've got to accept responsibility for what happened today. That's right, Granger. You've got the responsibility for that. Now, today's today. But I'm going to be very anxious to see what you carve out of tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right, that's all. How you feeling, babe? A little better? Much better. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Look what De Jong sent us. Isn't it beautiful? Read the card. This is the spirit god of happy homes. He comes to yours with my love. And he sent those flowers, too. <laughs> you know, this is so like De Jong to do something like this. Can you come to bed now? No, I'm, I want to run over and see him now. So you uh, get some sleep. I'll be back a bit later. I've been trying to sleep, but it's a little difficult with all those lizards all over the ceiling. I keep wondering when they're going to fall off. Oh, listen, honey, don't pay any attention to them. No, they're absolutely harmless, really. You just got to be sure to keep your mouth shut at all times. You'll be all right. I'll see you later. Thanks for dropping by. Buddy. 
back. How are you? Are you all right? I got my kneecaps on backwards, but outside of that, I'm a complete wreck, thanks. <laughs> Sabadi. Mac, I've been worried to death about you and Marion. But I wasn't there. It got out of control. It was a brute. Well, listen, I... I, I don't want to talk about that now. I just want to have a little uh, grog and listen to the frogs and meet your wife. Okay. Is she still up? Yes. Come and meet her. <laughs> Marion just loved the flowers she sent. They were beautiful, and the little stone god was just exquisite. Only a small thing, Mac. Well, you shouldn't be spending your money on us. <laughs> Who else should I spend it on? Rachani. This is Mac. Don di Jai Ma, di Jai Pa. Welcome to our home. Thank you, Rachani. I'm... I'm very happy to be here. I've looked forward to this for so many years. I never believed it would happen. Come, let's sit down. You know when I first believed it? When I was kicking the, uh, the snow off my shoes just before I got into the airplane. I realized that I wasn't going to have to have cold toes for a long, long time. I'm so anxious to meet Marion. Marion is dying to meet you. She, uh, she wanted to come tonight, but I thought after all the fun she had at the airport this afternoon that uh, she ought to have a night's rest. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, how about let's all have dinner together? Wonderful. Good. We have some palm whiskey. Rachani got especially for you. I hope you still like it. Well... <laughs> I was always so drunk when I drank it. I can't remember whether I like it or not. <laughs> ah, here's the rest of the family. Mac, this is Sawad. That is one. One of my worst assistants. He's lazy, he eats too much, and he's unpatriotic. Well, if he's all that, he sounds like my kind of man. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. This is a great honor for me. Your name has been a legend in this house. That's fine. You can finish your speech tomorrow. Sawad came to me during our revolution. And I'm glad to say he's never left my side. Sawad, will you please help me? Yes. Nice kid. Yeah. Well, you're doing all right, buddy. Nice house. Who you been stealing from? <laughs> it's my prize for being a great national hero. I figured. <laughs> One man got the Coca-Cola franchise. Another got the Grand Hotel. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I got this. All right, here we go. Thank you, Rajan. Well, OK. What do you got here, kosher pickle? Homemade. That's a kosher pickle. Good. Life and the ladies. <laughs> oh, boy. I forgot what good gasoline tastes like. <clears throat> Welcome home. back in a shell and slams the door and he's out to lunch. <laughs> Let's have a drink. Huh? 
Okay. But just, just one for medicinal purposes. Pardon me, sir. Did you want your hamburger with everything on it? <laughs> I wish I'd been a turtle this afternoon. I don't mind telling you. You know, when I left here in 1945, everybody was there and smiling faces and and nice people. And uh, I practically got buried alive in flowers. Then this afternoon, I just got buried alive. Something's changed in 15 years. I don't know. Mac, I sent those people to the airport this afternoon. You lost me, kid. I don't follow you. I don't know what to do, Mac. All day, I wanted to be dead. You mean you sent 6,000 people to demonstrate against me? Just to demonstrate, Mac. It wasn't supposed to be a riot. Do you know what happened out there today? A battering ram missed Marion's face about seven inches. Six people almost got killed. And you're telling me that there wasn't supposed to be a riot? Please, try to understand. I had to wear two faces now. One face said to my people, He's my friend, my dear friend. But the other face belongs to Sarkhan, and it had to say, he is America. Let America know what we insist upon. You could have come to me yourself. I mean, we don't see eye to eye on everything. No, friends never do. That's what they sent me here for. We're supposed to be able to talk to one another. Do they know I'm against freedom rule? Yeah, they got a, a pretty good idea of it. And where do you stand on that, Mac? Where do I stand? Do you still hate warmongering as much as ever? What's warmongering got to do with freedom rule? China and North Sac can complain all that time about it. They say it's an act of American aggression against peace-loving people. The Freedom Road was just supposed to uh, benefit the economy. Whose economy? Queen size? That puppet you keep in the government house? The common people have nothing. Not an egg, not a piece of... Fish! <laughs> what are you yelling at me for? I didn't put them there. <laughs> <laughs> not you. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but, but I really get mad when I hear that talk about the uh, economy. <laughs> Mac, freedom road is power. Powerful Queen Sai, that's all. Power to use against us with the army, the Pentagon trains, and the tanks that Wall Street sells. The tanks? Wall Street sells. Oh, boy. This is beginning to sound like a... Like a what? I don't know. I don't know, kid. I... Listen, I'm just wiped out, kid. There's nothing getting through. Now, let's call it a night. OK. I'm tired, too. We'll see each other tomorrow. Good. OK. All right, listen, now, where are my shoes? What are... <laughs> In the house. I'll fetch them. OK. We go around city two times now, sir. 
We we go now, please. Just uh, drive around again. I'm sorry to get you out of bed, kid. Come in. I didn't mean to wake everybody up. That's all right, Matt. What's wrong? I gotta talk to you. Come on. Let's go in the house. No, I don't want to. Mr. Bracciani, why don't we just sit over here? It's just as good. All right. Happen. I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one to get a hold of. Maybe it was the palm whiskey, but some of the, the things that you were saying here before just kind of uh, just kept flapping back to me out of the night. What thing did I say, Mac? Well, American aggression. Warmongering. Tanks that Wall Street sells. I didn't make them up, Mac. You can hear them all over. That's right, but the point is they're not true. They're not they're not accurate. I think they are true. You don't actually believe that America has aggressive aims in Sakhan. Yes, I do. My staff tells me that you've been seeing a lot of this local communist leader, Munsai. Is that true, Dion? Is one of our magazines going to write an editorial about me? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I'm serious, kid. So am I. And I don't think you want to ask me these questions. Dion, do you remember before when we were talking, you said to me, Mac, I gotta wear two faces. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta wear two faces, too. You don't know how they've been sniping at me about you. The people in Washington, the people in my embassy. Now, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just asking for a little reassurance. I'm asking for your reassurance, too, Mac. All the people in Sarkhan are united against the American military adventure here. And we will not be compromised. What military adventure? Freedom Road. Freedom Road symbolizes development here. And once that happens, North Sarkhan can't take this country over because it's very difficult to subvert people that have enough to eat and a capacity to defend themselves. Now, De Jong, if this doesn't begin to sink in pretty soon, this country, Sarkhan, is going to end up just the way Cuba did. Cuba? Cuba is what you made it. You helped Batista, just as you helped Queen Sai against the people. You always make dictators strong. Then wonder why you are not loved. Diong, I don't approve of dictators any more than you do. But if supporting dictators helps to keep the free world free, we'll support them. Expediency. 
Well, we're not going to sit by and be spectators to a communist takeover in this country. What communist takeover? America's putting the guns and tanks into this country. America's building that damn military road. I told you, De Jong, it's not military. Then force Quensai to prove it for my people. Take your guns and tanks away from him. The minute we take our guns and tanks out of here, there'll be a vacuum that the communists will jump into faster than Hitler took Poland. Now, who's spouting slogans? Where do you think you are? Little wreck? And who do you think I am? Your little bum brother? No. I'll tell you who I think you are. I think you're a dangerously misinformed man with a sinister notion about what the United States stands for. This is sarcasm, not the United States. We don't get down our knees to the stars and stripes here. You cheap, twisted ingrate. I am damn proud of the Stars and Stripes, and they've been pretty good to you. Who do you think's been buying your groceries for the past seven years? I'm not talking about the United States government. I'm talking about the American people from Boise, Idaho, and Moline, Illinois. People that have contributed millions of dollars out of their own pockets to Project Hope, to the care packages sent all over the world to people like you. You can't buy gratitude with your handouts. We don't need your gratitude. And we don't want you down on your knees to us or to Russia or to Red China either. Don't preach at me. I'm not your pupil anymore. I'm warning you, De Jong, for the last time you better listen I to what I'm telling you. I will not listen to your garbage anymore. This is not your country, it's mine. You're a Judas goat. And you're leading your people right straight to the slaughterhouse. Now, you listen. You wouldn't care about us if the Cold War didn't exist. Millions of us know it. Wherever you've exploited us, cheated us, abandoned us to tyrants like Gwen Tsai. Wherever black or brown or yellow men can read the newspapers and know Get that... Get your hand out of my face! Your democracy is a fraud. It's for white people only. I warn you. If we have to die again, we will die again. If we have to kill you, we will kill you. But we won't let the Yankee imperialist bastards tell us what to do. This is one Yankee that isn't even going to try to tell you. You're not a Judas Goat deal. You're just a communist. Ambassador McQuarrie, I'd like to speak to Mr. Granger. Can't you tell me anything? Granger, McQuarrie here. We're in a political emergency. 
I want you to do three things. I want you to assemble the staff for an eight o'clock briefing. Get the code clerk out of bed and ask him to stand by. I want to send a night action cable to the Secretary of State. And I want to see Freedom Road this morning. I'll fill you in at the embassy. Mac, can't you tell me what happened? He owns a communist. A communist? Yeah. Yep, every time he opened his mouth, right on the party line. What about the, the present and, and the flowers and... And the no doesn't... Doesn't it mean anything? Yeah. That means that we have an excellent chance of losing Sarkhan. And then all the rest of Southeast Asia. And that Senator Brenner was right about De Jong and I was wrong. Fifteen years. I was wrong. Pleased to meet you, Homer. Heard a lot of wonderful things about you. Thank you, sir. I'd like you to meet my wife, Marion. How do you do, Mr. Mr. Atkins? Atkins. Ah, call me Homer for Pete's sake. Hello, Oscar. Fine, fine. Tantut, American. I just introduced you to him. Sawadeep. Hmm. Sawadeepka. Ah. I'd like you to meet uh, meet a colleague of mine, Punja Chaka. Punja, this is Mrs. McWhite. How do you do? How do you Ambassador do? Ambassador McWhite. Very pleased to meet you. I wanted to tell you, Mr. Chaka, that it's, it's impossible to ride on that road without realizing what a wonderful piece of work it is. Thank you. We are very honored you have come to see it. Well, it's our pleasure. Budget's well, the fellow that keeps the ball bouncing around here. Come on, let's go on down to the hospital and see Emma. So this is a children's clinic. It was started by Emma and Homer, entirely at their own expense. Oh, marvelous. Uh, we figure, who wants to be the richest people in the cemetery? No, actually, Homer, this is, uh, this is exactly the kind of thing we need. It's worth a million dollars in foreign aid. Hello, Murphy. What's a good word? Save your money. Save your money is right. <laughs> hey, Emma, here's our company. Well... Hello, Welcome how are you? to Changdong. Thanks Emma. very much. Pleasure to see you. Hello, Oscar. Fine, fine. I was just bedding the kids down for a nap. Mm -hmm. This is Titi. Oh, come now. None of that shy stuff. Say hello, Titi. Hello, Titi. Sawadee. <laughs> That's all. Right. Sawadee, Titi. Oh, isn't she heaven? <laughs> well, why don't you girls go ahead and talk girl talk? Mr. Ambassador, I'd like to have you come down and meet the village headman. Oh, all right. Good idea. We'll see you a little bit later. Certainly. Bye, Titi. I'd just love to look around before they all go to sleep. Go ahead. accustomed to sights like that after a while. What's wrong with it? Starvation. We have a lot of it here. Gee, I really admire you. What 
brought you way out here? Oh, something Homer calls unfinished world business. And I guess I feel that way, too. You know, once you've been a nurse, you can't keep your nose out. You hear things, you see things. One day, I was having a shampoo down by the river, and there was this woman watching me. They bathe here all the time, but they can't afford soap, a lot of them. Anyway, I knew she wanted to try. I gave her the shampoo, and one thing led to another. Midwives started coming around asking me how to bathe the new babies and how to cut the umbilicus with a decent knife instead of that bamboo they use here. The tetanus here is simply terrible. And, well, I don't know. Looked around, and here it was. And here I am. Emma. Well, come Krua. May come in my hand, yeah? The headman is convinced of the fact, and he says that all the people of Chengdong feel that way. Tell him we think that the accident that killed Johnny Sumpat was caused by people who do not want Freedom Road. Gao Kitwa, Konti Mai, Tonkan Tanon Seri Pap, Wapenka Johnny. Puyai Han Wayang Rai. Puyai Han Wayang Rai. Kapang Kurua, make me ham. Yeah, come, come. He says they are afraid. People have come in the night to threaten them. What people? Cry. Tell him that it would be very helpful if he could tell us who they are. Tapo Yai Bok Dai. What pen cry, Chadi Mark? Go Jai Mark, Tibo Brown, Lago. All right, Homer, I want to see everything now. We get on some elephants, go see some jungle, fella. All, All right, right, let's go. Grab their tools and go right to work on the hospital. They want a concrete ward now. Fun just figured a way to get electricity in there. What is it, Puna? Please, you show us where it's to build now? I'll be right with you. Thank you. Mm. Don't be strangers now. And if you can't come, send your wife. She has a great talent with children. The kids can say my name already. Good. Thanks so much, Emma. Bye-bye, dear. Emma, pleasure to meet you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Fungi, nice to see you. Tawadi. Tawadi. Homer, it's been a very instructive day. Thank you for being interested enough to come down to see us, sir. Well, we're interested, Homer. There was uh, one more thing. How far can you pave in a day? We can pave a quarter of a mile a day, Mr. Ambassador. But I'm afraid we're going to get slowed down now with this Johnny Sumpat trouble. We're not going to get slowed down, Homer, by Johnny Sumpat or anybody else. Yes, sir. Be hearing from me. Thank you, sir. So long, Oscar. Bye, right, Homer. What's this all about? Young began a fast this morning. He has sworn not to eat again until Freedom Road is stopped. I guess he knew you'd be here, Mr. Ambassador. Thomas announced you'd be coming to present credentials.
I've been charged to convey to you the very best wishes of my president and my government. It is their earnest hope that the friendship between our two countries shall continue in peace and security. May God have your majesty in his wise keeping. We have the pleasure to receive you as ambassador to our government. And we welcome the harmonious relations we enjoy with the United States of America. You're a young man to be an ambassador. <laughs> Perhaps, but then the United States is still a young country. Sarkhan is an old country with a young government. May I present our Prime Minister, His Excellency, Kwan Sai. Mr. Ambassador, I'm happy you could accept my invitation for lunch. I look forward to a frank exchange of views. So do I, Your Excellency, and I appreciate you seeing me so soon. Your Majesty, may I present my staff, my deputy, Mr. Granger. I don't flatter myself that I'm an expert in human behavior, Mr. Ambassador, but I must say that your appraisal of Dion doesn't seem to coincide with mine at all. I'm not frightened of Dion, Mr. Prime Minister. As to his power, that's a fact. That's an odious fact. I don't think it takes an expert on anything to realize that the Ong won't stop at a riot, a hunger strike, or anything else. And I think that we must let the facts dictate future decisions. Don't you agree? Patience and moderation, Mr. Ambassador. To overreact is often less effective than not to react at all. Have another brandy? Oh, thank you. I don't mean to throw cold water on your fervor. I'm quite sure you came in here with some kind of a countermeasure, and I'd be interested to hear you out. I recommend this. Face De Jong down while you still have time. Do everything possible to split his following and move the majority to support your government. How? By proving to the Sarkanese people that Freedom Road is something for their benefit and by making it clear to the communists that you are going to put the pressure on and that you're going to keep it on. Now, I think that this can be accomplished very simply. Instead of the road moving east here to Ping Mai, it should strike straight north all the way to the Sarkanese border. Now, that would produce two dynamic effects. One, it would open up this whole timber area for development, which would benefit the economy, and it would drive a harpoon right into the heart of the communist concentration. And point number three, provoke my enemies. I'm afraid it would be too explosive. My government feels that this is an extremely worthwhile plan. Will your government stand by its military commitments to Sarkhan in the event of trouble? The United States stands by its military commitments everywhere in the world, but there's no reason to regard this as a military situation. It's purely a political maneuver. That's your opinion. I must know if your commitments would apply. Well, these commitments, Mr. Prime Minister, work two ways. And quite frankly, my government is still waiting to see some evidence of democratic reforms in Sarkhan. Mr. Ambassador, the ideal of democracy has been the fountain of my life. But I've told your government time and again to give freedom to a politically immature people is to put a dagger in the hand of a lawless child. The lack of democracy is uh, often a sharper dagger, Mr. Prime Minister. And as it stands now, your brother is uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Your uh, cousin is director of public works. And I would make my mother-in-law Chief of Police, if you were qualified, and sometimes I think she is. You see, Mr. Ambassador, we're staffed for people with administrative training here, and I haven't the luxury to pick and choose as your president has. I grant you that, but you must make a start somewhere, and I'm convinced that dramatizing the road could be the beginning of democratic reforms in Sarkhan. I'm convinced that you're convinced of everything you say. But before you go on, have I America's absolute commitment 
to stand behind us in the event of trouble? You have. Under the CETO Treaty, the moment that foreign troops with a hostile intent cross your borders, you will have the full support of American military power. All right. We are agreed. Now, how do you propose we dramatize the road? Next week is the anniversary of Sarkini's independence, is it not? Wednesday, yes. Now, I propose that if the king could be persuaded to cut the ribbon. Savadi. Well, thank you. Now, would you mind getting your rhinoceros nose out of my <laughs> drink and stop the snorkeling, if you don't mind? One sip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Mimi. Mm -hmm. Man, that's coffee. <laughs> hey, who's that guy there in the monkey suit? <laughs> Hello, how are you, Homer? Fine, Mr. Master. Good to see you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sit down. Uh, where's, uh, Emma? Did you bring her down? No, ah, you can't get her away from that hospital. She's got those kids up there, peering down their throats, making them all say, ah, <laughs> ultra -vis. Well, how about another beer, Homer? I'll skip this round, thank you. <coughs> well, wait a minute, Homer. I rode your elephant yesterday. You're gonna drink my beer today. That's right, Homer. Fair is fair. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, my assistant, Fungit, that young man I introduced you to yesterday. Yeah. He was murdered last night. That young man? Yes, ma'am. How did it happen, Homer? Oh, I, I brought you some pictures, sir. I, I must have got him out in the jungle. Good Lord. That's awful. I'll take you up on that beer now, Mrs. McWhite. Yet, boy and I have been together for two years. Forgive me, Homer, if I don't know what to say. It's just, uh... All right. The reason I came here to see you today, you remember the head man telling us about those warnings? Yeah. Now, this murder has, has topped the whole thing right off. I ordered that security that you requested, and I think that's going to help a lot. No, sir, it's not. Excuse me, sir, it's not. The people up there don't even trust their own neighbor anymore. Now, this road means a lot to me, Mr. Ambassador, and I know what it means to you. But I think the thing for us to do right now is to stop work on this road. Just ease off. Let everything settle down a little bit. Well, I don't think we can quit, Homer, just because we have a couple of casualties. Do you? Well, we're not at war, sir. We are at war, Homer. And the more we back down, the more they'll attack. Today, I spoke with the Prime Minister, and we agreed that the best way to handle this is to drive Freedom Road right straight up to the border. The border? Mm-hmm. Now, next Wednesday, the king is coming up to Changdong to dedicate the road. Mr. Ambassador, with all due respect, sir, that is the worst idea I ever heard. I know these people. They're not willing to die for Freedom Road. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what's going to happen when we try to pull a stunt like this, but it's going to be real bad. D don't take my word for it. Don't take Gwen's size, either. Ask Dion. He's neutral. He's honest. If anyone can tell you what the people are thinking, he can. <clears throat> Homer. Whether or not I talk with De Jong, I think, is irrelevant at this point. But I think it's a good idea, and maybe my bones have more information than yours. Please, Mr. Ambassador, please call this party off, sir. 
Give me $50,000, a little chicken wire. Let me build a decent hospital for these people somewhere down the road. Now, you saw for yourself how much they love what Emma's doing. They'll build that road themselves if it'll take them to their hospital. It'll give things time to quiet down a little. That's the whole point, Homer. There isn't any time, none. Now, there's only one way to go, and that's the way we're going. Okay, sir. Good evening, ma'am. We'll need a uh, pavilion to keep the sun off the king, Homer, and uh, some exhibition stalls, and uh, well, we'll send you the plans tomorrow. All right, sir. It'll be done. Fine. Good night, sir. Best to Emma. What's the matter, McWhite? It's all upside down, isn't it? Not upside down, it's just tedious. But it is upside down. You say De Jong's a communist. Homer seems to think he's something else. Homer says to, to build a hospital. You say, I don't know. That's the most awful feeling that nobody really knows what is going on or what we're up to. Ever since I got here, I've been receiving a lot of misinformation about the politics of this country from people who are not qualified to talk about it. Now, if you don't mind, I would just as soon not have to face that when I come home, one. And if it's not a great sacrifice, I would like to have a martini and a dinner. And we will call it a day. And, uh, call it a day. Ah, Dion. Uh, welcome to our little uh, summit conference. Are you surprised? I admit curiosity, Ambassador Kurpitsin. Why did you ask me to come here? The moon saying that the inviting, I'm only here to give moral support. Gentlemen, this is De Jong, the great revolutionary hero. And may I present Ambassador Wong of the People's uh, Republic of China, uh, Comrade Reznikov, you know. Здравствуйте, De Jong. Uh, Colonel Chi of the People's Republic of North Sarkan. Colonel Chi and I have met. Yes, at Pandong, 1955. My associates, Park Wiggs. So what? Uh, some, uh, some water, gentlemen? I don't know how you can drink that water. I got to carry my own tea. <laughs> the perfect Soviet diplomat, huh? Eh? <laughs> Colonel G. Nice, nice to meet you, you again. Well, De Jong, it seems your uh, friend, Mr. McWhite, has decided to become uh, a man of destiny. Yes? He and Quen Tsai have changed the course of Freedom Road. They are going to build it right to my border. I've heard nothing about such plans. It will be announced tomorrow in the newspapers. They begin construction next week, two miles above Chengdong. Why do you all come to tell me this? If I can read it in the newspapers. Because, Dion, we think we can help you. Help me or use me? What? China, North Saikan, Russia, even Monsang. Why? Why do you all want to help me? My friend, forget your cynicism for five minutes. The local bickering of Sarkinese politicians and American ambassadors is not important to us. What is important to us and to you is peace, to get rid of tension on the border, to get rid of reactionary government, to remove Western interference from Southeast Asia. That's important. That's important, yes.
What else? When Sai and McWhite have given you the signal to lead your people in a crusade to real independence, the country will never be more united against them than tomorrow when the news will become public. Break your fast. If you want help, we will help you. If not, all right, we'll uh, drink some tea and forget it. What kind of help are you offering? Colonel Chief, guns, food, medical supplies, and no soldiers from North Second would cross our border. No volunteers? None. If there is a revolution, only Sakanese should do it. And with as little bloodshed as possible. Mun Seng, would you put your cadres under my command? I would. There are many things to consider. I will study the newspapers tomorrow. Then I will decide. subjects, I dedicate this good work to the people of our land. May they and their children prosper and find relief from life's suffering in this great highway, Freedom Road.
Đắng đắng rồi Cô ăn đi đọc ao rương cánh băng nè Mày rú rương mắng anh thì mày để khoa mắng anh Remind her she's dead. To the American Benai. Mr. Ambassador, the Prime Minister is anxious to see you. Oh, there you are, Ambassador. I have very grave news. My radio reports a major coordinated attack. Villages are being looted. Guerrilla units are operating near the capital. Is there any evidence of foreign troops fighting with the armed forces? I have reports of that, and if those reports are confirmed, I'll have to invoke our treaty. All right. I'll be in touch with the 7th Fleet and the State Department, and please let me know if it's confirmed. Ah, well, I've got that. Over. Marion. We have to evacuate all American personnel. Now, as soon as the ambulances get here, I want you and Evan to come along. This is war, Homer. It's all over the country. I'll get everybody out immediately, Mr. Ambassador, but uh, for Emma, it's not going to be that fast. Not with all there is to do around here. All right. Take care. We don't have any security on the way back. Well, we don't have any choice, stranger.
जाए One of the members of my staff will listen to your problems and your requests, and each of you will receive individual attention and care. Meantime, we would appreciate so much your uh, being able to remain calm throughout this. It would be a big help. Thank you very much. What's the most recent report on Dion's position? He was headed toward Government House under a white flag, and that's the last we've heard. Where is it? We seem to have two separate wars going on. This mob destroying everything in its path, and Dion's boys being welcomed with flowers. The main stronghold in Haido is right here, sir. It's a radius of seven blocks around Dion's headquarters. Mr. Ambassador. Marie, call Quinsai, please, and tell him that we're on our way. Ranger. <laughs> speak. Now let Dion speak. My friends, this is a moment of joy. But more than joy, this is the most crucial moment in the history of our country. I ask you to keep this in mind as we prepare for the future. Quensai, I'm addressing you in the name of the Sakanese people. I call upon you 
to transfer the government to me by midnight, or we will take it by force. <laughs> Ah, McWhite. Prime Minister. Did you have trouble getting through? Uh, no, we, uh... Good. Excuse me a moment. You know, in the last revolution, I was in that crowd. Three King the same demands. It's rather like an overproduced version of Julius Caesar, isn't it? Well, I'm happy to see that you're not intimidated by this little gathering today. Oh, I'm quite relaxed, actually. When the worst part of a nightmare has been realized, there's nothing very much left to be afraid of, is there? Besides, if my head ends up on a pike in a market square, I want to be certain it's smiling. Well, I admire your composure. Now I'll outline the situation for you. De Jong has given me until midnight to transfer my government to him, or he'll take it by force. My troops refuse to fight against his people, so it's a fait accompli unless your Seventh Fleet put men ashore in time. We have here proof that hostile elements of a foreign power have invaded this country. Now, take a look. Pictures of paratroops landing. Ranger. Communist weapons, they're all there. You know, the whole situation is quite fantastic, really. It's clear now De Jong was never a communist. The poor, ignorant fellow was duped into leading this revolution. Duped? Yes, duped. He wasn't duped, Your Excellency. Oh, yes, he was. If you remember, Mr. Ambassador, I had reservations about your opinion of De Jong's I am thoroughly aware of your reservations, Mr. Prime Minister, and everyone else's reservations about this matter, but I cannot in good conscience say that I accept them as valid. De Jong has created this situation. It is a clear-cut situation, and it must be dealt with in a clear-cut fashion. Not that it's relevant, sir, but you astound me, Mr. Ambassador. I resisted you about De Jong, but you were right. I resisted changing the course of the road, but you were right. And now my country explodes and you still cling to your rightness. It might upset you vaguely, sir, if I tell you that you were wrong. De Jong is not a communist. He has never been a communist. And as Caesar was betrayed, so was he. He knows nothing about his own situation. Nothing about the paratroops, nothing about invasion. And as soon as my government falls to him, he is going to be assassinated. And, Mr. Ambassador, if you want to sign confession to that effect, that gentleman with a lump on his head will provide it. He is Colonel G of the North Sarkanese Invasion Force. And if you want to prove to him how right you are, you're welcome to try. I now make the formal request that the Seventh Fleet land troops here immediately to guarantee the integrity of this government. for the uh, Seventh Fleet to land troops here by midnight. 
I'll have to notify them within two hours. I'll take those two hours to try to find De Jong. Granger will stand by here. He'll be in constant touch with Washington. If you haven't heard from me by then, well, he has the authority to begin landing operations. I'd like to know the name of De Jong's assassin. I can't tell you that. Nobody knows. And while we're in the field of errors, i better correct one of mine. Democratic reforms are essential now, I agree. And if you can find De Jong, please tell him that. Perhaps a coalition between us can solve this situation without further bloodshed. Talk with the arm, it's very important. Take the driver's keys. You are the American ambassador? I am. Come. Please say why you've come. I haven't much time. I'd like to speak with you alone if I could, Dion. You know? Parkway will stay. Right. Been betrayed. You're going to be killed. That's interesting. Both Sarkany's paratroopers have landed here. The revolution is now in communist hands. I see. What else? Or have you finished? No. I could recite the... Uh, catalog of mistakes that I've made, the things that I've done to you, myself. But there just aren't, aren't enough years left in my life to tell you what I feel or how to make it up to you. You tell Quen Sai, I don't believe these lies. And I'm not going to make my people put down their arms. I'm not tricked so easily. Quen Sai wants to talk to you about a coalition, De Jong. He's willing to make reforms. Quen Sai has nothing to say to me. We've gained what we wanted. You haven't gained anything, De Jong. I understand that you don't trust me, but you can trust your own people. Call your northern outpost, ask about the paratroops. Call Quensai and ask to speak to Colonel Chi. How do you know about Colonel Chi? I saw him. He's a prisoner there. 
You see communist in your dreams. Maybe. But when the red flag goes up tomorrow, and you're dead, it really won't matter much, will it? I am sorry. I have no more time. Dion, if you don't call on that radio, you will not only be throwing away your own life, but you'll be killing Sarkhan. Believe me. Suppose it's true. What would you want me to do? It's not my country, Dion. It's yours. You said uh, that you're not my pupil anymore. And you're right. Ugly. Tada, I'm so sorry for me. What happened to us, Dion? We used to want the same things for each other. Freedom, peace. What happened? Maybe the headlines got to us. Fear, suspicion, 10,000 miles, and what he got? A couple of political cartoons shouting slogans at each other, hating, not even trying to understand. There's no immunity against a disease like that. Not if it can happen with us. Can you catch it while you're looking the other way? Young Japu Doi. Merai Bang. Crab. Crab. Sarkan Nua? Tell my mind, Ragan Ma. Nero. Crap. Crap. Capture. I'm thinking of the people who followed me. Some of them died today. What, what have I done to them? We can't save those who are already gone. We can keep others from dying. We got a little more than an hour to reach Quinsai. Who's going to kill me? I don't know, kid. Please wait. I say, the revolution is betrayed. I'm to be killed. Killed? How do you know? Walk with me to the command car. When I'm in, get those who have been with me longest. I must get to government house right away. Yes, dear. Come on, 
You better lie down, kid. Get the doctor. Come on, come on. Yes, dear. You must tell the people about this. Yes, dear. Make the new constitution with Queen Sai. Insist on our rights. You understand? Yes, dear. Monsang. It's the enemy, not not this man. Easy, kid. Please, please. Mr. Ambassador, Tyler, sir, NBC. Would you give us a statement for a delayed telecast to the state, sir? I'm sorry, Mr. Tyler. I have uh, no statement to make this time. The word, the, word is is out. Out. the word is out, Mr. Ambassador. The word is out that Dion has been killed. Is that true? Yes, that's true. We going to lose this country, sir? Well, we never had this country. Mr. Ambassador, who killed Dion? The uh, communists. The communists killed Dion and uh, misunderstanding. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've, I've had a very difficult day, and I... Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador. One more picture. A couple of hours ago, Senator Brenner called your tenure here a total failure. Would you agree with that? Yes, uh, it certainly was a partial failure, Mr. Tyler. When I, uh, when I said that the misunderstanding of Gil de Jong, if I meant my own misunderstanding, see, de Jong had a kind of passion that well, maybe all revolutionaries have. It's kind of uh, feeling that uh, it's easy for us to misinterpret. We forget that the men who started our country had that same kind of passion that De Jong had and that these other new leaders have. And unless we recognize their fight for independence to be part of our own, then we, we drive them to seek understanding in some other place. Are you saying that America is losing the Cold War because we're pushing these countries into the hands of the communists? I'm not saying that. I'm saying we can't hope to win the Cold War unless we, we remember what we're for as well as uh, what we're against. I've learned in a very personal way, Mr. Tyler, that I can't preach the American heritage and expect to be believed if I act out of impatience or sacrifice my principles for expediency. I've learned that the only time we're hated is when we stop trying to be what we started out to be 200 years ago. Now, I'm, I'm not blaming my country. I'm blaming the indifference that some of us show to its promises. If the Cold War disappeared right now, the American people would still be in this fight against Ignorance and hunger and disease because it's right. It's right to be in it. And if I had 
one appeal to make to every American, it would be that 